Today I'm gonna to be adding some under cabinet lighting to these cabinets. And as you see, the cabinets and drywall is in place. A lot of you have asked for that. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is remove all these old light fixtures. They were old fluorescent fixtures. They had 120 volts going to them. These new LED tape lights are all 24 volt. What I'm doing here is I'm just showing that the switch leg is right there that's going to that wire. So I'm gonna disconnect that and actually cut it completely out of the box. So it will not be used in the wall now. Now I'm just breaking this box out of the wall. What I wanna do is create a handhole here where I can fish the wire up and down. So that's what I'm doing is getting that box out of there. As you can see, I'm just gonna be mounting this driver underneath the cabinet. So I'm getting this driver position so that it is directly below that hole, as you can see in the wall. That way I can just drill a hole right in that cabinet and it comes right below where that switch box is. So it makes it very easy to feed this wire up into that hole. So what I'm doing is sending a 14-2 wire that will be the switch leg for that driver. And then I'm also feeding a 18-2 that is the low voltage side, which will be the 24 volt side of that driver, which is the load of the driver. So it's funny because a lot of people would say that you can't run low voltage and high voltage together or in the same hole, but that is mainly because of data transferring. And we're not transferring any data here. All we're doing is switching a voltage. I've done this many times. I've had zero issues. If someone can explain to me what issues this does cause or would cause, I would love to hear it because I am yet to find any. So now, as you can see, I'm just using that switch box to also feed up into right underneath the cabinet. But now I'm moving over to mounting the driver. As you can tell, all I did was just bring both of those wires in a knockout there on the driver box. Remember, all of this stuff can be found at ejbuildingsolutions.com. It is a business that me and someone else created. As a professional, I found it very hard to find quality drivers, LED tape light, all things that were necessary for a professional installation like this. Like anything, you have a problem, you create a solution, and that's what we did. As you can see, there was a little path there that I could snake that low voltage wire through. It is marked output and input. I didn't zoom in on that, but it is. Now you'll notice that I did get a box installed back in that hole. I'll show a little bit more of that coming up in the video, but all I'm doing here is making up the switch. I had power in there because I had a receptacle, so I'm just taking the neutral, which is the white, and I am tying it to the driver so that the driver's got a neutral, and then I'm using the hot as the switched, and then I'm using the switch leg going down that I fed up to the switch as the switch leg. Hope that makes sense. And then all I'm doing with this over here that was a switch is I'm just turning it into a double receptacle. So here I've got the same thing that I had over there. I'm disconnecting the switch and the light. I'm going to delete that switch leg going up to the fixture. That's a fluorescent fixture taking 120 volts, just like I showed on that other side. So I'm going to repeat this exact process as what I did over there. I knew I'd win. So now I'm just removing the nails that were used to hold that box onto the wall. I don't want to create anything where that wire would get caught or have something that would obstruct the wire from going into place. Same with the new box that I'm going to install there. So the type of box I'm using here is a smart box. As you'll notice, it has those screws right on the side of it. I'm just poking those wires through there. That box is really nice because it fits the exact hole that that nail in box was. And so this is kind of why you want to keep the integrity of the hole that you had there. Notice that I had already fed the wires where they needed to go. That is the cabinet right below where I was working. So I did the same thing. I'm just installing a driver there. Something else I did was I just ran that wire behind the range and then through that cabinet, right up into that hole, I pulled that box out where the outlet was. As you can see what I'm doing there, I'm just gonna fish up to where I want that wire coming out to feed the LED tape light on that cabinet. So every box or hole that there's an outlet, I take the entire box out. And what that does is it provides a nice hand hole to fish the wire up where I need to be and I don't have to destroy any of the backsplash. So it makes things really nice. It's a little bit of work, but I assure you it's very worth it. And just popping those boxes out and then putting these new ones in does not take that much time. So I'm in another section of the kitchen now. As you'll notice in this one, I actually deleted a phone jack here and I installed a switch in this spot. So I actually had to drill a hole and 
run a power wire from that outlet on the other side of the stud, but it worked out really well. And yes, there are three different switches for these three different locations that I've shown in this video. So there I am fishing the wire across. I was sure to drill that hole lower than what the two holes are. So it was an easy fish across there, but there's another driver location. If I really wanted to, there are wireless switch applications where we could have all of these come on one switch, but this customer wasn't really worried about having three separate switches. So that's how we did it here. It was easier and cheaper with this option. As you'll notice, I'm showing off this tape light. This is Cobb tape light. It's got cut marks every three inches. As I said, this is a product that my company uses, uses a lot of it, and I wanted something that we could trust, something that we could warranty. These are the screw-on connectors you'll notice that I'm using there. They're a little bit finicky, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but once you figure out how they work, they are the best connectors on the market. Aside from soldering, which I think everyone knows can be a big pain in the butt, it is very nice connector. So here I've got two different elevations of the cabinet. You'll notice that I just drilled straight up. So I'm gonna actually connect the two LED tapes together that way. So here I'm just using a little plastic piece of wire mold to cover up the wire. That's all I'm doing in the corner. Back to where I was, you'll notice that I am putting a connector on the end of that tape light run. And then I am using a little jumper wire to go through the cabinet and then it's gonna connect to that other tape light run. So these drivers that I'm installing here were 60 watt drivers. As long as you don't exceed 20 feet of tape of this tape light, you are good to go. So here's a look at what it looks like. Again, I always shine my tape light straight back to the wall like this. I don't like it facing down because you can see the reflection really bad off of the countertop if you face it down. I did use the screws to help hold that up. We don't do that anymore. Now we use an adhesive for it. These drivers are Triac dimmable. This is a professional product, guys. This isn't some $16 stuff that you buy off of Amazon, I promise you that. We wouldn't be installing this by hundreds of feet per month if it was. Please let me know if you have any questions. I've been happy to answer a lot of questions throughout this whole process. I like being able to provide a professional quality. As you'll notice, I'm just going around kind of showing the finished product here. Drivers right below switches, all of these new boxes, receptacles, switches installed. I hope all this made sense for everyone. I've always had a lot of questions about how to do this after drywall was up, so I'm pretty sure this kind of took care of everything everyone needed. EJ out.